Hi everyone and welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 17. I'm here and uh, the special birthday boy is here. Hello. Oh yeah, that is you. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> it's not his birthday when you're listening to this, but it is his, his birthday when we're recording it. So It's not live. It's not live, no. I don't think anyone Shocking. expects it to be live. Do they not? No. The topic that we're going to discuss today is how can you trust Lego reviews? Yep. How can you trust Lego reviews, Ian? Well, so this comes about... we. You see a lot of people talking about LAN and... How their reviews are biased. How their reviews are biased. And to some degree, that's true. If you get given a set for free to review and you have to report back statistics on it, there's going to be an amount of unconscious bias. Yeah. So, And that comes about in a couple of different ways. But I think the main one that people talk about is the fact that you've got this unconscious gratitude that Lego has given you a set for free, so you're going to review it more positively. Mm -hmm. There's also the fact that you've not paid for it, and therefore you kind of don't care if it's overpriced. So you're going to sit there, so you you may look at how much it costs, but you didn't have to work out whether you had the budget to afford it, so there's less connection between you and the price. So... Yeah, there is definitely that pushing you towards a bias. Yeah. But everyone has unconscious bias. Yes, exactly. I think everyone, yeah, like you say, has an unconscious bias, but land members get a lot of flack yeah. for it, and it just seems really unfair to me. It does. Because, it... I mean, if you consider, so as we said, a land member doesn't have to pay for the set. So therefore... In some ways, they're more free to talk about the set. If you've had to purchase a set yourself, you've and you're find. hoping to gain money either through affiliate links or just from people watching the video, then that adds a bias into it. Yeah. Are you, you going to, go to pick out it. all the flaws if you're trying to convince someone to buy it? Or if you don't quite like it and you don't think you can recommend people to get it, are you going to exaggerate the flaws to try and create controversy so more people will watch the video and you earn more from ad revenue yeah that's true if you're being um compensated another way you're not looking to make money you're looking to provide a review and therefore you'll be more objective yeah it? yeah doesn't make sense yeah so i mean then then you've got so there are going to be people who have there's a very strong drive for them to be balanced and if and people in that category i would say you've got jang Mm-hmm. his reputation on giving good balanced reviews is extremely important yeah he's not going to go out and exaggerate something to try and get views on that video no. because it's going to damage his brand overall yeah and his integrity so he's got that kind of outward pressure to make sure that any unconscious bias doesn't filter through into the review but how do you, so the whole nature of unconscious bias is that it's unconscious. So how do you filter that out? You have to acknowledge that it's going to be there. So then it's not unconscious bias anymore. Yeah. You, so you have to be a lot more self-aware of what you are actually thinking. Yes. <laughs> it's not always easy. It's not. I mean, obviously, then there's the one of the reasons why a lot of people talk about land being biased is that. When a new set comes out, all of those reviews that come out before it are hugely positive for it. Yeah. And there's a very good reason for that. And it's not that the reviewers are particularly biased. No, it's that Lego are smart at who they send yeah. the sets to. They have a ridiculously good marketing team. Yeah. Well, they do tons of research into it. That's why land members have to provide so many stats. Yeah. You know, it's because the marketing team are monitoring that. It's that they are going to send the set to the person they know who's going to do a positive review of it. Yeah. So the Daily Bugle, they will send out to people who they know will talk for 20 minutes about how amazing the arm printing is on the minifigures and ignore most of the building. Yeah. You know, that that set, the building does have a few flaws with it. A few flaws. A few flaws. Quite a lot of flaws. Um, You mean flaws AWS. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) But so if you specifically give it to someone who isn't going to care about the building and is going to focus on the minifigures, 
then it's a much more positive review yeah. overall. And they get the hype that they want and the the, the review that they're, they're after. Yeah. Why would they not do that? So I find it very frustrating when someone is a long-time follower of a channel and then as soon as that channel becomes a LAN member, they then say, right, I no longer trust you anymore. Mm. As if that person has instantly changed. Yeah. And the reviews, if you go back and look at their previous reviews and their current reviews, exactly the same. Yep. And we've seen that with people coming out of LAN as well. Their reviews have not changed when they've come out of LAN. Yeah. May, they may be a bit bitter about how the relationship with LAN ended, and that may influence stuff slightly. But on the whole, they have the same reviews. Now, I don't know if they left, if part of them leaving was because they were being pressured to give different reviews. I'd never heard of that. No. I've Every- heard of other problems and people complaining about some of the other topics they're talking about, but not specifically the reviews being negative. Yeah, and every land member that you hear from says they are not told what to say. That's yep. they're purely telling you what they believe. Yeah. Um. So how how can you fix that trust? I mean, and if there isn't that trust of being in land, why would you ever want to join land to get free stuff? To get free stuff. No, I mean land. Land has several different purposes. You've got the reviews and obviously then you get that you have a certain amount of budget each year you can spend to get sets for free to help with your channel Mm -hmm. or whatever it is that you're doing as part of LAN. Surely there's that other side of you can also filter things from your fans into the Lego process. That's that should be one of the biggest points. That's a huge thing. And I think no one ever talks about uh, that. People are suggesting that's why We've recently seen a huge increase in land members in the US because Lego is struggling in the US, particularly with AFOLs. Right. And so they're trying to build up more land members to try and influence Americans and to get that feedback from Americans. Yeah. Because I think that feedback loop isn't as clear. You see the reviews and you see people getting the free sets, but you don't see what they're taking back, I guess. Yeah. Is that because... You don't see what changes Lego are making based on that yeah. feedback. So that's not very transparent, therefore you don't see that benefit. Yeah. Um, so, and part of that is that Lego is not all that transparent with some of its decisions. Video, basically going on pause while they redesign it, is that based on sales? Is that based on feedback through LAN? Is it based on feedback through other mechanisms? Lego doesn't say why. As probably most other companies don't say, well, yeah. they, the, the internal people understand the justifications, not always. Sometimes <laughs> it doesn't filter even down the chain there. But they don't release those decisions. Yeah. So you just got to accept that these things happen and, and there is probably some sort of feedback loop. So how can we make our reviews better or less biased? Do you think I am biased? Um, I don't think so. But then again, I'm quite biased. In what way are you biased? About you. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm great, don't you? Yes. Yeah, that's because I bought you breakfast this morning. You did. Yeah, mm. best wife ever. Um, I always look at a set. Um, I always make it clear in my reviews. So, for example, if I'm reviewing a modular or a winter village set, that I was going to buy this no matter what I thought of the set because I am an avid collector of those sets. Yes. But if I wasn't... These are the things that would have turned me off from those kind of, yeah. this kind of set. So I always try and make it clear that I have that bias. I think that's the thing. If you can yeah. make it clear in the, the review that, yes, I'm going to buy this because of this. Yep. But I'm disappointed by these elements. Then you're you're being transparent. I think that's the thing. Yeah. I think that's the only way you can build trust in your reviews is to really let people into your entire thought process. Yes. I mean, it's going to be difficult for so a channel... If a channel is not a specific review channel, mm-hmm. then people then they're only going to be reviewing sets that they bought because they like the look of. Yeah, that's true. So you're always going to get, whether or not the review is biased or not, the channel is going to give a more favourable outlook on Lego sets. Because they're only buying the ones they actually yes. favour. If you are a kind of, you know, hardcore review site and you buy every set and you review every set, then there are going to be ones you don't like. Yeah. And so you'll get a more 
varied view across the range. So, for example, if we started reviewing Star, Star Wars, Wars sets, sets yeah. or Technic sets, yeah. then you're going to get a lot of different points brought up that we just wouldn't talk about with a set that's going to go into the city. Yeah, I'll be like, this is a Star Wars set. I've never seen Star Wars. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. And then that'll be the end of my review. Or you'd be going, well, I've not seen Star Wars. I don't care if the colour printing on the Stormtrooper is slightly wrong or inaccurate for where they're sitting in the spaceship or that they've renamed a spaceship because they have. (laughs) I think with some sets, though, there are elements that I would buy them for and other bits that I don't care about. So, like, with the video sets, we've bought a lot of those based purely on the minifigures. Therefore, I can review the whole... And the fact that they were 50% off. Yeah, that helped. Um, So I can review the sets, even though I wouldn't have ordinarily bought those. Yeah. So I guess taking advantage of deals helps helps you to do those reviews. Um, Video reviews coming soon, people. But, of course, those reviews aren't going to be the ones that you're looking at when the set first comes out. Because as you said, you're waiting, it was, for, it, yeah, you're waiting for the, for the deal to get it. By the time you've got it on the deal, a lot of people will have already looked at reviews to try mm. and work out whether they want it. So I don't think it's a case of the content provider trying to remove bias or something. Because there is there is always going to be some bias there. I think it's about the viewer working out which reviewers kind of a similar level to them so going uh, yeah that person reviewed this set i then bought it and i agreed completely with them therefore i will trust them on yeah. other purchases because yeah. they know my my mo kind yeah. of thing. this is what i like they like it so i'll just go watch their reviews and will always be in sync yeah yeah that makes sense if you are really keen on the minifigures then you want to find a reviewer who focuses heavily on the minifigures yeah. so um Sai O'Connor that that is his area of focus yeah he likes minifigs. He, he started off as a minifig collector that's what he's going to focus on so if you like minifigs go and look at his reviews yeah. he doesn't do that many but you know that they will be more along the lines of what you see whereas for us minifigures they're interesting I like minifigures. You like, yeah but, but I'm not I'm not bothered about like dual moldedness and like those yeah. things i just do they look fun yeah and, and you're not bothered about accuracy if they're meant to portray yeah, a person true. do they portray that real yeah. life person i'm bigger on like the cmf series and like minifigs just in sets as yeah well. um if you have bought an, a set on offer and therefore can do a review of something that you wouldn't necessarily normally buy the fact that it's on offer means it's later on in its life is there any point reviewing at that point I think so. Um, depends how long in its life it is. If it's actually retired, then maybe not. Because uh, it depends. Some sets, the aftermarket stays fairly level with retail price for a while. So it's still worth doing a review on it to see it for people who have realised it's retired. Yeah. And it's down, are looking maybe. at whether they should get it or not. I guess that's the difference with like, Robin Hood Bricks. He puts retired sets into his city and he doesn't really review them, but he shows you how you could use them to to add them to your city and yeah. maybe modify them. So maybe with the older sets, that's a better way of of showing that content. Kind yeah. Or well, when they do a re-release of a set, you can go back and review the old set to say, well, the old set is now worth this much in the aftermarket. Is it worth it over the new set? Mm, that's true I hate it when they re-release sets mm. <laughs> but it's like say you're looking for a cottage for your winter village should you go with the new one yeah, or should you go with the old, the old retired one now the old retired one's very expensive so I take over the new one also but... well yeah I think the new one um, is a lot better mm. because it's more playable I yeah. think if that's the, the, the level that you're looking for I think we also give reviews based on like what our kids have thought as well yes so, so yeah we focus on it from a it's going to go into our city and our kids are going to play with it yeah so those are the two aspects we heavily focus on yeah so i guess then the other topic is lego themselves being misleading Ooh, controversial so things like the um the new fender oh the um 
the guitar. The, the very small guitar. That in all the pictures don't doesn't look very yeah, small. Yeah, Lego really didn't in any way indicate its size. It, if you go into it in enough detail, it does. And if you look at the lifestyle pictures on the website where you've got an actual person holding it, then it becomes then, yeah, obvious. it's very obvious. But yeah, most of the advertising for it didn't mention that it wasn't one-to-one replica. I guess because in... So I'm assuming they get a whole bunch of people come along and people go, oh, that's really small. I was expecting it to be bigger. And they go, right, let's market it so that people don't realise that until they're really invested in it. That's it. it. So, they want to get people onto the Lego site and looking at the stuff rather than dismissing it because it's the size of a ukulele. Or slightly smaller. I yes, or smaller than a ukulele. That's not bias as such. That's no. That's them trying to push their product in a smart way. Yeah. Are you saying we shouldn't it's, trust? It's another... So we're saying there's no one we can trust... I'm saying that you should always be slightly sceptical of everything. Yeah. I think what you say is is the right answer, is find someone who you align with. Hmm. Or find several people you align with, so that you can get a balanced view. Don't just go for one person, and just just because they're the biggest review channel, yeah. if they don't fit your... your... Yeah. yeah, so obviously... I would say Jang is the biggest review channel. Seems to be. And he reviews it mainly from the point of view of it's being sold as a toy. Yeah. And so when he talks about whether it's worth it or not, he looks at the play value in the set. Yeah. If, if it, you don't display, care about play value, you just want it on display, then you might find that it's... there's someone out there who does better reviews. Yeah. Mm. I also think that a lot of the time I like to see the set myself. Yeah. to make a decision so there'll be times where I'm like no I don't like that set and then mm. I've visited the Lego store and it's on display and I'm like that's a lot different in person yeah. to what I've seen so that can influence mm. you so actually that's something that I'm kind of struggling with with the Bricklink Invitational oh of course because no, there's no way you're, to see you're that you're having to buy it without having seen it without being able to see anyone review it all you're getting is the marketing of the person who's trying to sell it, essentially. Yeah. So you're seeing the pictures that they want you to see. It's risky. But then at the same time, there's enough people that didn't get those sets that you could then sell it on to. Yeah, if you buy it and you go, well, this is a disaster for whatever reason. It's the wrong scale or it falls apart when I give it to my kids or whatever. Yeah, there's going to be an aftermarket where you can sell it. Yeah. But or you can it, pro- you can actually just return it to Lego. In most countries, Lego have a you can return it for any purpose, for... and you have bought it through Lego. Yeah, okay. That's the important thing. You have not bought it through Bricklink. You went through the Lego website to buy it, so it should be covered in all of their terms mm-hmm. and conditions. I guess that's the nature of the beast: is that it's it's lo- that's the Kickstartery part. Um, it's not the fact that Lego need the money, it's that they need you to just trust yeah. that without them doing all the marketing mm. and the reviews and, um, yeah, all of that part. Um, I never really thought about that from the Bricklink Invitational stuff. Mm. Right, well, um, it's your birthday, so we should probably let you go and enjoy some more of your birthday. Ooh, what have we got planned for me? Um, What's my lunchtime surprise? Wouldn't you like to know? How about another <laughs> podcast? You haven't got me a special birthday lunch? Um... No. Shocking. But anyway, so do your research, find your people. That's that's our advice. Yeah. And and lay off the land members. I think that's that's my my personal message is they're still people, they're the same people they were before they were land members and they are doing their best to give an unbiased review just like the rest of us. Yeah. I think that's that's my, my parting comment. Seem fair? Yep, seems fair. Right, okay, we will be back next week for another episode. If you like this one or have any comments you want to share, then let us know in the comments below on YouTube or via Instagram um, at the BrickBods, and we will get back to you. Don't forget to subscribe so you get notified next time we do an episode, and we will catch you next time. Bye! 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 Bye!